All right, AP Calculus Lesson 5-8, piecewise integration. Again, it's going to be quick. Um, today's date is Thursday, December 10th, 12-10, 2020. I got too far over there. It's not going to work, whatever. Um, our objective today, let's go Teflon. Integrate piecewise functions algebraically. Exactly. So yesterday, 5-7, all you had was a graph of piecewise equations. You had to figure out a triangle, rectangle, triangle, rectangle. You added it that way. Now I'm taking away the graph. You just get the equation. How do you do that? All right. So um, let's start with the graph first, because if I said, oh, if you're taking the integral between 0 and 4 of f of x, and this is f of x, uh, what is that area? And then you guys are all really good at that. You say, okay, the bounds, you go from 0 over here to 4 over here, and you need to divide this up into shapes. Um, I'm just going to kind of randomly say, make that into a rectangle, make this shape into a triangle slash rectangle. And we have our, our shapes. So let's really quickly go through what are the area of all these shapes. Um, let's go, Andrea, what's the area of this triangle on the top left? Three. Uh, sorry, what was that? Three. Not quite. It's a two by two. So the oh, rectangle. Two. Yeah, there it is. Two. Um, Chris, rectangle below that is? Uh, two. 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 Uh, Fiona, rectangle, the really big rectangle over here that's two by three is? Six. Six. And we can say, oh, yes, that was very clearly uh, six plus two is eight plus two again is 10. Cool. We know that it's 10. So you can actually write this as a piecewise function, though. So how does this function get turned back into just f of x? Well, you have to say, well, there's two equations. If I'm purely looking at the blue line, there's one line right there, and then it kind of has a sharp corner, and then it turns into a different line over here. So what that means is we have two functions, and we have a, a suspect point, suspect point. Um, that's what we were calling it. The thing that it switches at, at two. So we need to say, hey, everything between zero and two is this equation, and everything between two and four is this equation. So I'll go ahead and say, um, we'll, we'll figure out what the equation is in a sec, but I'll say everything, this equation works as long as, or I can say for um, x that's between zero is less than or equal to uh, x is less than two. And you might be asking, well, why didn't you do a less than or equal to? I could have, it's just random. Um, I'll, I'll make the less than or equal to on this one though, to make sure that that two is the one that's equal to. Um, and this one is between uh, two and four. So now we just have to figure out, okay, what equation is between zero and two? What equation is between two and four? So can anyone tell me what the equation of this line right here is? It's a, it's a line, so you could just use y equals mx plus b. Call on someone then again, Andrea. Would it be two x plus one? Really close. So um, two x plus one is a little bit off. I agree that the y-intercept is one because it crosses right there. But what's the slope of this line? The one half. Goes it goes right one, then up one. So it's not oh, one. Yeah, exactly. So it's just one X plus one or just X plus one. Nice. And then this equation is even easier. You just have to remember whatever a horizontal line is. Does anyone know the equation of this line as if it were, if it went on forever and ever, it would still work. It's just a, a number. Just three. Yeah, exactly, Chris. It's just three. Boom, and you've made a piecewise function. Wow. So how does this work? If I just had this, I take the integral of each piece with these bounds. So if I'm taking the integral of f of x between 0 and 4, I break it at the suspect point at 2. So I'm going to say, OK, this integral between 0 and 4 is going to go from 0 to 2 of that integral, and then 2 to 4 of that integral. Here we go. So if this is now going to be equal to the integral between 
zero and two. Again, these boundaries up here that I've rewritten, and maybe I should um, get rid of those lines, those circles, I don't need them. Zero and two of x plus one, and I guess all that dx to be formal about it, plus, and then the other integral. You're gonna kind of squish these integrals together, add them together, because I'm really adding this area and adding this area. And then this next integral is gonna be between two and four of this function three dx. And we know how to do that. Um, I, I don't know why I'm writing up here. I realized that I gave myself a spot for it down here. So let me, let me transition down here. So what is the integral between zero and two of x plus one? I need to take the antiderivative first. Um, let's give that to Chris, antiderivative of x plus one. Okay, so what's the antiderivative of x? x is to the power of one, it goes up to the power of? Two. x to the power of two, and then I? Uh, I you, you, you bring that down, don't you, so over two? Over two, exactly, and then antiderivative of one, it's really, you think of one as really one Four. x to the power of zero, so it's gonna go up to the power of? One. One, x to the power of one, and then I do what with that one? bring it down yeah divide by one and that's just x, x. perfect so the antiderivative of x plus one is x squared over two plus x and i don't chris have a c i have a is it that one bar thing yeah do you remember the name of it this bar evaluation thing? bar evaluation bar between uh zero and two zero and two perfect so Chris is taking the antiderivative of this function and let's go ahead and take the antiderivative of this function. So I'll say this thing is gonna be added to, maybe we can do parentheses so I know what the, the evaluation bar is talking about. Plus, start parentheses over here again, antiderivative of three, Teflon. Um, that would just be three X. Exactly, so three X. And that thing is going to be, I guess I don't need such large parentheses, so I can say 3x. Not plus c, though. Um, evaluation bar. 2 to 4. Between 2 and 4. There it is. Nice. And then we actually do that. So um, now help me plug in Fiona. Um, Fiona's going to plug in for this one. Andrea's going to plug in for that second one. So Fiona, you're up. Um, zero squared over two plus zero. Oh, first you have to plug in the, the two and then you'll oh. do minus the zero. Two squared over two plus two. Minus um, zero squared over two plus zero. Perfect, can you simplify that? Um, four minus zero. Four minus zero, yeah. So say four, nice. And then Andrea, you're up. This three x evaluation bar between two and four is what? It's three times four minus three times two. And it's six. And that is six. And I saw this plus sign in between. So we say, oh yeah, four plus six. Here, I'll do the, the hardest part of the problem. That's 10. And box it. And hey. Look, that's what we got graphically. We can check our work. Yay, got ourselves on the back. Good job, team. Okay, so um, let's generalize this procedure every single time. So um, if you have two pieces, um, pieces just meaning how many equations do you have? If you have two pieces, maybe I can say um, slash equations. I'll write that above here. I can't spell you equations. If you have two equations or two pieces, that means you have two integrals. So that means two integrals. And if you had three pieces, you'd have three integrals. However many pieces is the number of integrals you should have. Whoa, what happened to my antiderivative 
Um, I forgot the VE. That's weird. I'll have to go fix these notes for next year. Um, yeah, second step is you're going to do the antiderivative. And the antiderivative, you're going to obviously do the, the start to the suspect point. So the bounds of your antiderivative are the start, whatever your start was. So if this integral from zero to four, that's the original start is zero. If I go from zero to where? I go from zero to the suspect point two. So our bounds are going to be start to the suspect point. Suspect point. And then um, next bound is that suspect point to the end. And then the end of the original integral, right? The end was four, so the suspect points two. So two to four was the, the second bound that we had over here, well, right here. Okay, we have this down. Let's try it again. Now you guys are going to take more control, obviously, for this example, now that you've seen one. So here we are. We have two pieces, 2x plus 4 for x is less than or equal to 2, and then x when x is greater than 2. We have two pieces. We know we're going to have two integrals. I want to find the integral between 0 and 6 of this g of x, and g of x, again, is defined by those two pieces in a piecewise function. All right. Um, let's start us off, Fiona. What are we gonna do? Um, would it be two two x plus four between zero and two? Two x plus four between zero and two dx yes and can you do the next piece as well plus x between two and six two and six and dx. nice yeah if you're gonna split it up correctly let's let's give it to andrea i wanted to get you to do the antiderivative yesterday and you're going to do two of them now to make up for it so you're going to take the antiderivative of both of these pieces First one would be 2x cubed over 3 plus 4x. Uh, cubed. Um, I think this was originally an x. So it was just going to go up to the power of 2, right? Two, two. So 2 over 2. So it would be just x squared. Perfect. Yeah. So we'll just say x squared. Plus 4x. Um, evaluation bar between zero and two. Perfect. Keep going. Plus, and it would just be x squared over two. Yep. Evaluation bar between two and six. There it is. Nice. All right, um, Teflon then Chris. Teflon, you're gonna do substitution for the first piece. Chris, you're gonna do substitution for the second piece. Teflon, you're up, go for it. Um, so you plug in two, so it'd be four plus eight. Four plus, sorry, you cut out there a little bit. Eight. Four plus eight, yep. And that reduces down to? Twelve. Twelve, thank you. Chris, you're up. Uh. Oh, and before I go too fast, um, we, we ignored the zero. I, I assume that's what you're doing, Teflon, because if you do minus zero plus zero, it's kind of pointless to do. We can add it in if you want, but yeah, zero squared plus four times zero is nothing. So we didn't have any subtraction problem. Just want to make that clear. Uh, sorry, Chris, you are going to have a subtraction problem, though. Uh -oh. Is it 18? 
It is. Yeah. How'd you get that? You plugged in the six, right? Yes. So you got six squared over two, and that does eventually reduce to 18 because 36 divided by two is 18. So you all have 18 here, but then you have to do subtract, then what? Plug in the field. Uh, two. Minus two, wouldn't it? That is two, yep. And then Chris, can you add these all together? 12 plus 18 minus two is? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Everyone box it. There it is. You guys are now all licensed to take integrals of piecewise functions without any graphs. All right. Um, so that were those were our notes. Um, FISTA five. How well can you integrate piecewise functions algebraically? No graphs. FISTA five. Four for Fiona. Four for Andrea. Four for Chris. And four for Teflon. All right. Thank you.